Hello everybody, my name is Niputu Intan Maharani. So today I will present to you about self-quarantine safety protection mobile app in South Korea monitoring those in quarantine. South Korea is one of the most successful countries to contain the spread of the coronavirus, which has been endemic since the end of 2019. The country is able to flatten the curve of confirmed cases without closing businesses, issuing stay-at-home orders, or implementing many strict orders. In response to this pandemic, South Korea implements an approach, which is to test, trace, and treat, in which this is greatly helping the country to stop the spread of the virus outbreak. For those who have been in close contact with the confirmed patient, which is having been within 2 meters with a confirmed patient, or having been in the same room where the confirmed patient has coughed, or just come from overseas, is subject to a mandatory 2-week self-quarantine. To monitor those in quarantine, an app called Self-Quarantine Safety Protection is utilized. Self-Quarantine Safety Protection app is a mobile app developed by South Korea's Ministry of Interior and Safety. From the 1st of April 2020, the installation of this mobile app is mandatory for those who are required to do self-quarantine, especially for Korean citizens and foreigners with long-stay visa holder who have been in close contact with the confirmed patients or just come from overseas. In this mobile application, it enables the end users to report their daily symptoms, such as body temperature, whether they have cough, sore throat, or difficulty in breathing. It also collects the user's location information by using GPS in their smartphone. By this information, the caseworkers can monitor those in quarantine and determine whether they stay at home or their quarantine area, or leaving their quarantine area. When first registering to use this app, besides the users have to enter their personal information, they also have to register their quarantine area location, which usually is their home. If the users are leaving the registered quarantine area, an alert will be sent to both the users and the case workers. However, some people tried to trick the app and violate the quarantine rules by going outside and leaving their phone at home or their quarantine area. In regards with this, the Ministry of Health and Welfare introduced a wristband called SafeBand to be used by the violators. The violators are given a choice to either wear this wristband and continue to quarantine at home or their registered quarantine area, or to be quarantined in the government-designated facility. Then, the app is upgraded to support the safe band function by the Ministry of Interior and Safety. The wristband will be connected to the app by Bluetooth connection. An alert will be given if the distance between the wristband, which is worn by the users, and the phone is exceeding 20 meters and if the users are trying to destroy the wristband. It also has added a motion detection feature to check whether there is no motion detected of the phone for a certain period. Here is the stakeholders value chain diagram of the self-quarantine safety protection app. First one, direct stakeholder. It can be seen here that the Ministry of Health and Welfare, KCDC or Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and online map provider are the content provider of this app. They provide information regarding COVID-19 symptoms, self-quarantine guidelines, and an online map that shows the user's current location point. As mentioned previously, the Ministry of Interior and Safety is the developer of this app. They developed, launched, and upgraded the app. This app can be installed in Android and iOS smartphone, which has GPS capability in which are provided by smartphone vendor company such as Samsung, Apple, LG, and so on. Along with smartphone, wristband also being used, especially for the violators, which is provided by the government. To operate the app, such as submit their daily symptoms and provide their location information to the case workers, Internet connection is needed, which is provided by the telecommunication company in South Korea, such as KT Corporation, SK Broadband, LG U Plus Corporation, and so on.
The local government is the one that uses the information collected by this app to monitor those in quarantine, which is the end users. Next is the indirect stakeholder. The indirect stakeholder in this application is Korean National Assembly as the standardization committee. They provide the legal infrastructure of the deployment of this app, such as allowing the authorities to collect patients or potential patients' personal information in pandemic situation. So, in this study, all of the information regarding the utilization of self quarantine safety protection app in South Korea is gathered from multiple sources such as newspaper articles, regular briefing published by the government or the Ministry of Health and Welfare, and articles that are published by the government entities. Here is the example of newspaper article that is used as the sources of my study. It can be seen here that this article provides information about self-quarantine safety protection app, which is the app that is used to monitor those in quarantine. For example, it provides information regarding the developer of this app, which is the Ministry of Interior and Safety, to track the location of those in quarantine and to enable those in quarantine report their symptoms progress. This is the example of regular briefing that is published by the Ministry of Health and Welfare. This regular briefing provides information such as the introduction of the wristband, which is called safe band, and the new motion detection function, which is added to the self-quarantine safety protection app. Here is the example of the article that is published by the government body, such as the Ministry of Health and Welfare, which discusses about Korean government response system. This article provides information such as all travelers that enter Korea from overseas have to be tested for COVID-19 and for those who tested negative, especially Korean citizens and foreigners with long stay visa, have to do self-quarantine for 14 days and install self-quarantine safety protection app. Location-based service can be considered as an effective approach in response to emergency situations such as pandemic. In providing location-based service, legal infrastructure is required. The technical system of the service has to be underlined by the applicable law, for example, law about infectious disease control and law about privacy. Social issues must be considered as well. For example, in respect with location-based service, there are some people who do not have a device to use the location-based service. The unfamiliarity of a certain technology by some people, the inability to read and write, beliefs of a group of people that against technology utilization, the disagreement or distrust in the utilization of the service, such as privacy, concern, and freedom, and so on. When providing location-based service, the technical issues have to be considered too, such as determination of form factor, its security, accuracy level, and the accessibility of the service. From GitHub Open Source, this app, which is called Covidist, is a similar application with self-quarantine safety protection app. This app allows the user to set their home location and to track the user's current location. If the current location of the user is outside of the predefined radius from the home location, an alert will be sent by the app. As you can see here, here is the source code of Covidist app. To set the home location, the app will get the latitude and longitude of the entered address by the user. Next, this is the source code to get the current location of the user. So, where to next? South Korea has several ways to solve the socio-technical legal issues. For example, a legal infrastructure in South Korea, such as Infectious Disease Control and Prevention Act, which includes to equip the Minister of Health with extensive legal authority to collect private data from both confirmed patients and potential patients without a warrant. Another law, such as Personal Information Protection Act, states that government agencies that need personal data for public interest purposes can collect and use the data without the requirement to acquire consent. So, Self-Quarantine Safety Protection App implementation is already based on applicable law. For the social issues, 
South Korea ranks among the top in the rate of mobile phone ownership, which is 88.5%. Moreover, the local government also provides a smartphone rental service for those who do not have a smartphone. For the utilization of wristband for the violators, is also requiring consent from the violators. The government does not force the violators to wear the wristband. Meanwhile, the government gives them a choice to either wear this wristband and continue to quarantine at home or to be quarantined in the government designated facility. The government also communicates this approach to the citizens properly, in which this builds obedience and trust of the citizens to the government in containing the spread of the virus and it is significantly increasing the effectiveness of the provided service. For the technical issues, from the Google Play review of the app, several users stated that the app keeps sending alerts that the users have left the quarantine area even though the users are not leaving their quarantine area. Therefore, the accuracy level of this app has to be properly considered and fixed. The security of the personal data that is collected by the app is also important. The developer of this app has to make sure that the collected data will be secure and not leaked that could lead to the misuse by irresponsible parties. And lastly, research and development is important to be conducted during the deployment of the app in order to increase the effectiveness of the app in monitoring those in quarantine. The government has to be aware of the current situation and find a way to solve it. For example, the new wristband feature and motion detection feature to make sure that everyone in quarantine do not try to trick the app. And it brings us to the end. Thank you very much for your attention.